is a fighting out of the red corner, wearing the silver and black shorts, hailing from Western Supermare, Tommy Gifford. And across the ring in the blue corner, wearing the black and tartan shorts, weighing in 14 stone, with an unbeaten record of three wins. Presenting and introducing from Dublin, Ireland, Steve Cullis Jr. Your referee in charge of the action is Bob Williams of Watford, who will now give his final instructions to both boxers. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, come on. Ladies and gentlemen, four three minute rounds. Well, let's have a look now at Steve Collins Jr. It ages you a bit, you know, when you see fighters' sons in the ring. Didn't seem that long ago that I saw Steve Collins win his world Steve title. Collins, first round. And still looking as though he could step in the ring tomorrow, by the way. Steve Collins Jr., 23 years old. And his dad says, although I guess he would do, that he's got world-class potential. Well, let's have a look. Well, he moves his head well. Just crosses his feet over when he comes forward. I don't know whether that's a tactical thing or, or just a... He's thrown so much weight behind the shot that he's, the momentum's bringing it forward. But I don't think it's always a good thing to do. Bring that right foot forward when you throw the right hands. Always best to keep your, keep your shape. I only started boxing last year. He was a, he was a rugby player. And a pretty decent one as yeah. well. Hooker for Lansdowne. Very much got the uh, Collins family colouring, hasn't he? <laughs> and strength by the look of it. Tommy Gifford has been stopped twice inside two rounds. And his own victory came in the first. So he's kind of a hit or be hit kind of guy. Work. F. Collins just staying low, dipping the head, and then coming back with shots to the body. And leaning on Guildford as well, isn't he? Just tiring him out. Can kind of be a double-edged sword, can't it? Having such an, an illustrious dad, there's a pressure to succeed and an expectation. Yeah, it's very hard. I don't care who you are. It's very, especially when it's such a success, successful dad as, as Steve Collins, who's always had the following in footsteps. And you, you've got to try not to judge him on that. Which is easier said than done. Well, I'll tell you what, of the fighters that I've seen over the years, Steve Collins is right up there with the seriously hard ones. Tough guy. Just behind me, I presume. Just behind you, of course. Oh, good jab there from young Collins. Just like to see Steve Collins when he gets him up, when he gets Gifford on the ropes, just Take a little half a step to the side, just to open up the body for the hook and then maybe the uppercut. Steve learning curve. Of course, there are fighters who've had few amateur contests. Johnny Nelson, a, a yeah. prime example of it, who, who went on and had a terrific professional career. What was he, a world champion for seven years? Scott Quigg. Yeah, absolutely. Had a handful of, and he's a world champion right now, yeah. Good jab there from Gifford. Well, Gifford looks a bit of a mess. Face a real mask of blood. There's a little one-two there from Gifford. I think Gifford needs to try and come forward, you know. You'd expect him to be the one on the back foot. That's a round for, for Collins. Yeah, hard round, that one for Gifford. Swallowing a lot of the old claret. But he looked better when he, was, when he had the little goal trying to go forward at the end of the round. You think being a taller fight that he'd have to box on the back foot? Staying nice and low though, isn't he, Collins? Which is always the best thing to do against a taller fight, to utilise your, your size and stay as low as you possibly can. Okay, you stop him with the job. Jimmy Tibbs right working right in the job. corner okay. alongside Let the right hand go when you see the open. Be clever with it. Use it, okay? Use it smartly, right? Don't throw too many, okay? Walk off that straight jab from me, please. Yeah. You're walking well and straight, doing everything good. 
More jabs. The jab is, is busting them up. Another drink. Straight down the middle, Stevie, okay? All right, son, relax, okay? Relax, you can Breathe, get your hands. Four is ten seconds. Well, sound advice, of course, from Steve Collins. You just heard Peter Fury talking about Huey and emphasising the fact that everything comes off the jab. And Steve Collins, you heard him there saying, work on the jab, that's what's busting him up. Yeah, well, well just missed there with a big left hook, Collins. He got clipped on the way in. I think he's got the right idea coming forward, quite bullish, I think, but using his, obviously, he's physically strong. But I just think he's getting a little bit too close and smothering his own work. But you're right, behind that jab, you know, it's a solid jab, he steps behind, he puts all his weight behind the punch. Just needs to maybe double it up when he comes forward, just to make space for that right hand. Nice little combination there from Gifford. Again, see, when he's proactive, when he's trying to box on the front foot, I think he looks better also. Just like to see him maybe try and push Collins back behind the jab. Collins saying that he does feel terrifically fit and strong since he's been concentrating on his boxing and that he's ready to do four rounds at 100 miles an hour. He can force the pace right the way through. Well, he's the aggressor, but he's taking one or two as he comes into range. Yeah, and he's moving his head and doing the right sort of things. It's his feet. That's the, the way he's catching our shots. He's a little bit square footed, a little bit flat footed. Nice jab coming forward there, though, from Collins. Yeah, just needs to find a little, few little angles with his feet, just a little half a step to the left or the right. He looks, in all honesty, as though he could get down to super middleweight, doesn't he? He's fighting as a cruiserweight here, but he's not a big frame. No, well, he's muscle bound, isn't he? Like, no, obviously, he need to be for rugby, I guess. It's all about power. A solid body shot and heard it thud home from our ringside microphone in that corner. Good work again there, there's plenty of head movement there from Collins, that's good. There you go, and then he, he took the step, the step to the side there, that's good work. That's a little cut there from Gifford in return. Nice and low, but, but aiming high with the shot, aiming, aiming for the headshot with the jab coming forward. A solid right hand from Gifford to the body of Collins. And two rounds over, another one for Collins, yeah? Yeah, definitely, yeah, I think, you know, he's, he's doing all the work, isn't he, to be honest. Gifford's having a little go back in stages, but he's just being all hustled, isn't he, by Steve Collins, Jr. Okay, he's trying to shot right uppercut, OK? Don't smudge yourself. Breathe with it, breathe OK, to the lungs, right? Just use that jack. He was having a little bit of distance, right? Try them straight shots. The straight shots are working for you. Straight punch will work for you. Good right, good right hand to the body, OK? But the straight shots are working. He's running them ropes, he's being clever, OK? He's waiting, he's trying to wear you well, and he's looking for that uppercut. Okay, so keep them, keep the head straight, bend the knees, straight punches, and he's on the ropes. That's going to work for you, okay? But you're winning. You're winning those two rounds, okay? Be sensible, be clever, all right? He's waiting for the tired out on the ropes. You're not going to tire it out trying to play straight punches, all right? All the sense straight seconds. punches, straight punches. You heard Steve Collins saying, don't so smother your work, which three. is kind of emphasising what Barry's been saying here at ringside. Just a little bit over anxious, and maybe that lack of uh, amateur pedigree, perhaps showing the schooling which he'd get over the years. Well, he's built like a tank, and he's using his strength for his advantage, which is obviously the right thing to do. But he's getting a little bit too close. Oops! He hurt his hand on his shoulder then, Collins. The far side of the ring, Billy Joe Saunders among those watching, and a couple of rows back behind him, just by the corner post, George Groves. Not an interesting year ahead. Oh, he's got the world at his feet, doesn't he, at the moment, George Groves.
I'm not sure if Collins has done something to his, to his shoulder or his right hand. Well, he's not thrown. Let's see if he's throwing it. Taking an uppercut there, and Gifford's having a bit more success here in this third round. Just 30, 40 seconds ago, threw the shot and just walked back and a little grimace. And hasn't thrown it since. That's good footwork. Those made, it's helped his footwork. When, by no means, just even a little shuffle to the left there again. Well, still very much favouring the left side now. It's going to be interesting to hear when he's speaking to Dad between rounds whether or not there is a problem. And uh, well, it maybe looks like that. There's nothing coming in from the right hand. Still doing pretty well, considering he's boxing one hand at the moment. If it not really realising, not really taking advantage of it. I'm sure Jim Evans in the corner will be uh, sufficiently long in the tooth and uh, well versed in observer to realise that that's happening, and he'll be telling him. Good uppercut there from Gifford, right uppercut. He's had a bit of success with that one. And Collins is just struggling a bit here in the latter stages of this third round. Stood the right hand there, but there was nothing in it was there from Collins. Not at all. There's the uppercut again. Yeah, let's take a left hook back from Collins where the better shot was Gifford's for sure. Well, the gum shields come out. He's just looking as though he's blowing a bit as well, Barry. Yeah, well, I think, I think he's in a bit of pain with that with that arm or that shoulder or the hand. I'm not quite sure what it is, but something on the right side for sure. Just think he'd give it to the top of the head. Again, you see him coming in behind the jab, trying to follow it up with the hook. There's one which does get through. Nothing coming through from the right side. Oh, and he's getting, he's getting tagged here. A couple of good, solid uppercuts from Gifford. And the gum shield's out again there from Steve Collins Jr. Well, was it knocked out or yeah. is he trying to buy time here? I think it's a bit of both, but there was, it was plenty of punches landed to, to justify being knocked out by Gifford. Referee Bob Williams just telling him his impression of it and suggesting that he might have done a bit more to keep it in his mouth. Uppercut again from Gifford. Had uh, real success in this round with that punch. And Collins still trying to come forward, not a lovely jab there from Collins, but Gifford full of confidence right now. Well, interesting third round. Did Gifford do enough to win that one? I think he just stole it at the end, to be honest, John. I think, I, I think even though Collins had the problem with his arm, he still boxed quite well at the beginning. There we go. I think that's the shoulder. You see him grimacing, can't you? There's the uppercut. That uh, landed repetitively and damagingly. Well, it took Gifford like a minute almost to realise that, that Collins was in, in a little bit of distress with that, with that shoulder or that arm, and then he took full advantage. George Groves, Billy Joe Saunders in front of him. A lot of interest, of course, in this promotion. All building towards the big summer showdown. Everything goes according to plan. Chisora versus Fury. Now, this is where Collins really needs his footwork to work for him. Oh, nice little shot there from Collins. They're all here. Anthony Joshua is sitting just behind us as well. He's obviously got a great interest in what happens here. He's uh, seeing potential opponents at well, some stage in the future. One of them just boxed, I'm sure. You know, he's closer to Huey Fury, isn't he, than, than Tyson for sure in, in, in possible matches. Uh, Huey Fury against uh, Anthony Joshua, that is an interesting one, whether or not it can be made at some stage. I guess as the interest grows, anything can be made. The heavyweight division starting to come alive, isn't it now? But Steve Collins Jr. here, a little bit of a mini crisis. But Gifford, 
Nani with a good shot there, but hasn't taken advantage, has he? Had a good last round, but really needs to step on the gas now. This is a, he can get a draw if he wins this round on my card. Well, I certainly gave Gifford the last, and he's doing pretty well here as well. Well, it was a good start for the first minute of the round, I think, from Steve Collins Jr. You've got to give young Collins his credit, even though he's having pain in that right hand, he's thrown it anyway. He has all of his father's um, determination and he's grit. He's been sent out telling him he's got to get out there and fight like a champion. He's got to really grit his teeth and dig in. Do with a good last minute here to make sure. Yeah, nice little right hand there, wasn't it? Off Gifford. He's catching Collins walking back with his hands low. First two rounds, fairly clearly to Collins. Bob Williams, he's the man who's going to be adjudicating. If he's given it the third to Gifford, then it's all on this one. It's a Gifford a chance there. of getting the draw. Close round this last one, I think. I think the first half was definitely all Collins and Gifford coming back into it now, I think, with a cleaner shot. Well, out comes the gun shield yet again for the third time. This will be his last warning, John, I'm pretty sure for that. I think he can consider himself a, a wee bit fortunate. Maybe a good job that it's a four-rounder. Wee bit fortunate that he's not had a point taken. Jim Evans in the Gifford corner, certainly making his uh, opinion of it pretty loudly known. It's a nice uppercut again. That's a solid left hand, though, from Collins. Needed that one. Perhaps yeah. needs an eye-catching flurry here in the closing seconds, Barry. Yes, anyone's round, isn't it, this, I think. And Collins, again, showing a lot of grit. Gifford, for me, just maybe not doing enough. I... Well, how do you score that one? Gifford thinks he's done enough. He thinks he's won that last round. Steve Collins looking a wee bit anxious in his son's corner. I wonder, how did you score it as a match of interest, that last one? Come on, off the fence. <laughs> I've stayed on the fence, I give it even. I think it was... Oh, I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't believe it. Even, so you've got it Collins by one. I've got it Collins by a 39, point, 39-38. Yeah. But I think, I think Gifford just didn't start that round off sharp enough after having a good third round. 40-38, I should say. After having a good f first round. A, th a third round, I should say. Gifford just never put his foot in the castle like he should have in that last round. Then Collins have a good first half of that round. Come back strong at the end. Because that was a fight there Gifford could have well, could I have think, got a share in. I, I think. think there's certainly an argument that that could be a draw. Let's see how the Master of Ceremonies can relay the scoring as seen by referee Bob Williams. Who's got it? Let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee scores the contest 38 points to 38. This contest is a draw. A round of applause for both boxers. Well, I've seen it how I saw it. It's 38 apiece, two rounds each. And fair to say, a little bit of learning to do. Well, that's the first draw on his record. Gum shield out at three times. I don't think that uh, the Collins corner can have too many complaints about that. Well done to Jim Evans and well done to Tommy Gifford as well, uh, who gave... Um, Steve Collins Jr. a real stern examination. And just a little idle down the line as we look at Anthony Joshua there. Of an interest in the heavyweight scene. If you're just joining us on Box Nation, you're very, very welcome. Anthony Joshua will be keeping a keen eye on Tyson Fury. Round about 10 o'clock, Derek Chisora will follow soon on after that. Of course, this is not an exact science. When you rejoin us, we'll have a look at uh, Bradley Skeet taking on uh, the Frenchman Christophe uh, Sibir. And Bradley Skeet, English champion, he'll be next in the ring here at the Copper Box.